Today we're going to continue with activity 2.1, need input. And we're going to be looking at the difference between analog and digital inputs. The main input that we're going to focus on today is going to be your pressure sensor. Now, something to keep in mind about analog and digital inputs is that by attaching an input device to your microbit, it requires you to connect the alligator clips to the three volt pin to supply power. Most input devices require power to detect a change in the flow of electricity. Most output devices, however, rely on power from the GPIO pins. That power then must go to ground. So as we move through this activity, you are gonna see how we can connect our external sensors by connecting them to the pins on the bottom of your microbit. Please keep in mind that all input devices need to be connected to either pin zero, one, or two, while the second wire should be connected to three volts. You will use two different types of input devices in this unit, digital and analog. Sensors are inputs because they put electricity into the microbit. The way that you put electricity into the system is what makes them either digital or analog. Digital sensors can only be on or off. There is no in between. Analog sensors, however, can report a range of values and thus often need a conditional statement in the code to use them properly. Push buttons A and B are inputs on your microbit that we have used before. These buttons have two conditions. They are either pressed or not pressed. The digital value is zero if it's not pressed or one if it is being pressed. Take a look at our code below and here you can see that we are using a forever loop and within that forever loop, we have a condition if the A button is pressed. If our A button is pressed, we should see a happy face. If the A button is not pressed, well, then we should see a straight line across the screen. As you can see that when we press the A button, we are sending a digital signal, which represents the number one to tell our program to show the smiley face. When the A button is not being pressed, there is no signal being sent. Therefore, the result is a zero and we get that straight line across our screen. In our upcoming topics, you will work with analog and digital sensors. Analog sensors send varying values to your microbit. The value can depend on the amount of bend in a flex sensor, or the amount of pressure you put on a pressure sensor, or even the amount of light detected by the photoresistor. All of these sensors have specific values that can be sent. The type of inputs that we look at, such as an analog sensor, have a range of values. These external sensors use a range of anywhere from zero to 1023. For our digital sensors, the type of data that's being read states that it's either a zero or a one when using binary. This means it can be on or off, true or false, or even high or low. Now, something to keep in mind is that our pressure sensor is known as an external sensor. This can be attached to our microbit by using what we call alligator wires, or sometimes also known as alligator clips. The clips allow us to connect to those GPIO pins, or otherwise known as pins, on the bottom of the microbit. This device can detect a change in force using either an analog or digital values. We're gonna be using a digital value for our force sensor or pressure sensor. This means it's either going to be pressed or not pressed, true or false, one or zero. To test the pressure sensor, you must complete the pressure sensor project. Now for this project, we're gonna be using a forever loop since we want our program to continuously run or check if that pressure sensor is being pressed. Now what we want our program to do is if the pressure sensor is being pressed, we just simply wanna show a check mark on our LED screen. If the pressure sensor is not pressed, then we should show an X. So either way, we should see either a check mark or an X on our screen. We're gonna be using our button A press to show that variable that's being used in our pressure sensor. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we would build our pressure sensor program. Now, as we go ahead and program our pressure sensor, there's gonna be a few new blocks that we're gonna look at adding into our program. One of them is going to be a variable, and that variable is going to be set to read a specific pin on your microbit. In this case, we're gonna be going ahead and using pin one. Now with our pin one, we have to decide whether that pin is going to be read as an analog or a digital signal. 
In this case, we're gonna be using pin one as a digital signal, meaning it's either pressed or not pressed, or in binary, one or zero. One meaning true, zero meaning false. So we're gonna take a look at that flow chart. And in that flow chart, we want our program to continuously check whether or not the pressure sensor is being pressed. So we're gonna go ahead and use a forever event handler, and that's gonna allow us to constantly check to see whether that pressure sensor is indeed being pressed. Now, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna give pin one a name. When you have multiple inputs on pin zero, one, or two, it can be difficult to understand what sensor is being attached. So we're gonna go ahead and create a variable and then assign that variable to be equal to one of those pins. So we're gonna go ahead and select our variable drawer and we're gonna go ahead and make a new variable. In this case, since we're doing the pressure sensor, we're gonna go ahead and just call our variable pressure sensor. Now, once we go ahead and create our variable, we have a choice. We can select the pressure sensor, we can set the pressure sensor, or we can change the pressure sensor's value by one. The first thing we need to do in our program before any type of logic is set that pressure sensor. So right now we have a variable that's called pressure sensor and the value is equal to zero. So if we were to go and call that pressure sensor, we would see the number zero on the LED screen. What we want to do is set that pressure sensor to be equal to one of the pins on the micro bit. So we're going to be going down to our advanced drawer. And in the advanced drawer, we're going to be using this pin drawer, which we have not used up to this point. When we select the pin drawer, we're going to look at using a digital read pin. Now later we'll learn about using an analog read pin, a digital write pin, as well as the analog write pin. Our digital read pin is going to basically read whatever the value of that pin is. Now, as you can see, we've set that pressure sensor to digital read pin zero. We're gonna go ahead and change that pin from pin zero over to pin one, which means we'll be reading the value on that pin one on our micro bit. Now that our pressure sensor is set to digital read pin, we can just call that pin by calling the pressure sensor. Now, if we look further into that flow chart, our logic statement says if the pressure sensor is pressed, which basically means it's equal to one since we are using a digital pin. We're gonna go into our logic drawer. And in this case, we have one condition, but there's two possible outcomes. We have if the pressure sensor is pressed, we're gonna see a check mark. And if it's not pressed, we're gonna show an X. So because there is only one condition and two outcomes, we're going to be using an if else statement. So we're going to drop that if else statement and that if else statement needs to be below the setting of your variable. That's really important to know for this next step. Now for our condition, we're going to go ahead and look at if the pressure sensor is equal to one. Since one in binary means on, true, or even pressed. So what we wanna look at doing here is adding a comparison block in our logic. And we're gonna be using this equal sign. Just as we did before, we need to find our sensor and we also need to find the value. Because we've created our variable pressure sensor, we can now go to the variable drawer and just select pressure sensor. We can do this now because our pressure sensor has already been set to read the value of pin one. If we have not set the pressure sensor to this point, we would have nothing to compare the pressure sensor to. So at this point, if we look at our condition and we say, if the pressure sensor is equal to zero, that means that the pressure sensor is not being pressed. We want to see what happens when it is. So the zero would have to change to a one. So since one means pressed or on or true, we can now see that if the pressure sensor is equal to one, then we should see a check mark appear on the screen. So under our basic, we're just going to go to a show icon. And in that icon drawer, we should be able to find a check mark. Now that we have our check mark, the last part of this is what if the pressure sensor is not being pressed? Well, if the pressure sensor is not being pressed, we're going to show an X. So we can go back to our basic, pull another show icon, and then simply go ahead and select that heart and find your X. Now at this time, what we wanna look at is our micro bit. If you've noticed, next to the pin one, we have this little white zero. So on our emulator, we are able to change the value on the emulator to test our program. 
At this point, that white zero is showing me that there is no pressure being applied to that pressure sensor since the value is zero. Therefore, we have an X on the screen. We can change the value by clicking on the number one and changing that zero to a one. That is demonstrating that we now are pressing the pressure sensor and we can see a check mark on the LED screen. If we go ahead and click the bottom of that micro bit again, we should be able to change that value to a zero and see that we now have the X. Now for our emulator, this is great because we can see what that value actually is. But one of the things we want to look at doing is adding that pressure sensor test just to make sure we understand what the value is. So we're going to be using our event handler on a button press just as we did before. And we're just going to go ahead and select a show number. And in that number, instead of showing the number, we're just going to go ahead and add the pressure sensor. That's going to show us what the value is if we wanted to test this on our micro bit. So for example, on pin one, you can see that the value is already set to zero. But if we go ahead and hit the A button, that X should change over to a zero for us to see. If we change that value to a one, we can go ahead and hit the A button again. And now we should see a one on the screen. Now, this is really helpful when debugging your hardware to make sure that everything is working correctly. And it also works great with analog sensors to determine what that value is in real time. Now that we've gone ahead and completed our pressure sensor, go ahead and build your program and give it a try.